to be honest, that took me a very long time. And I think many friendships that I've had throughout my life, um, because I am such a trusting person and like, I wouldn't use anybody else or think of somebody else, like for my own benefit. I never thought that someone would only be friends with me because of my dad or because they, they wanted to associate with me for reasons other than being my friend. Once again, everyone, it's that time. You know it's that good time to get real with your guy, Ronald E. Smith. And my guest today, she's a generation superstar. But from who? Who are we talking about? If you're a WWE fan, you know who the person I'm talking with. Once known as Tina Morella, I'm speaking with his daughter and the future superstar wrestler of the world. The only person I could be talking to is the one and only Bianca Corelli. How you doing? Hey, Ron. Thank you so much. That was a great intro. That got me fired up. <laughs> this is what I do. This is how we get the, the, the ball rolling every single time. And going here on Getting Real, we love to speak with our guests and have them just open up about themselves and go on a journey to know who they are. And there's no better person I want to talk with right now about that because Bianca, you are so young in your career, the, the sky's the limit. So with yourself just getting I mean, a few years in, how have you been able to adapt during 2020? Oh, that's a good question. Obviously, I wish I could be doing in-ring training, training with a lot of people, getting the experience I need, because I feel like at this point in my career, that's what I need is just to get my reps in, have those matches and wrestle. But you know, I've been limited obviously because Ontario is just a disaster right. and if, yeah Canada not even just all of Canada like Ontario is the worst but um I've been studying tapes you know watching old stuff new stuff I have a whole list of things I, I want to do as soon as I get in a ring uh, I've been maintaining my own physical fitness uh, as well as just trying to develop myself more just kind of as a person um kind of increase my skill set mature a little bit so you know when the wrestling world opens back up I'm more well-rounded as a wrestler in person altogether and I'm ready to hit the ground running and what do you mean about trying for your for, for you to get better as a person like can you dive more deep about that just working on the last year of my degree right now which I'm super proud of I took some time off to wrestle and I just had a few more courses so now I'm wrapping them up so end of July my degree will be done and that's just a huge relief for School me. School finally done. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, that's something I wanted to finish up for a long time. So I'm really happy. And, you know, I feel like I've been getting smarter <laughs> from all the studying. I feel like I'm getting smarter. So, hey, maybe that translates to the ring, you know? Psychology, wrestling psychology. Look, 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 look yeah. at this. And okay. <laughs> And okay, and with, like you said, I know okay, I have a few people up there in Canada too, and they've told me too, it's very, very hard to do basically anything up there yeah. with the restrictions they have up there. And you, you're also in, with finishing up school. So like, how was that even for you learning while also being shut down in your house? Well, to be honest, and I'm probably the odd case here, I actually love learning from home. Um, I'm a homebody, so I'm much Same. more organized. Yeah, like I have all my stuff around me. I know where everything is. I don't have to get up, go all the way to school. And like, I have a little bit of ADHD. So when I was in a class setting, it'd be very easy for me to get distracted by someone around me, like tapping their pencil. Oh, uh, I get that, okay. Yeah, you, and then you, you miss you half the lecture. Did you always sit in the front or were you a back body? You, you always sit in the back with, with, with the loud mouths. It would depend on the class. Like sometimes I'd be way at the back or sometimes I'd be way at the front. Like there's no, there's no middle. Like it's either I'm fully engaged or I'm checked out. It always, <laughs> it's, it always depends on the, on the professor. If I like the teacher, then I'm very close to the front and I always answer questions. I'm kind of a nerd that way, but that's how I like to learn. And, you know, and I think it's also very smart for you to also get your degree because in, in this industry that you're in and the one you want to pursue it's hard you know it's anything can happen with with this with this business you can break a knee you can tear something and then just like that it's over 
you know, has that ever even thought you're, you know, in your head too, to like to pursue a degree just in case this might happen? With anything, it's it's good to have a backup. When I first started wrestling and I took that time off school, I thought, you know what, I don't need school. Like wrestling is going to be like a 100% my career path, a sure thing. And it never really dawned on me that something like COVID could happen or that maybe I could get injured until I actually did get hurt uh, last year. Or maybe, no, I guess it would be two years ago now because of COVID. It feels like it. It, it, it feels long. I know. I know. Yeah. So um, after that injury and then after COVID, I was kind of like, oh, wow, maybe a backup plan is probably like just a safer bet. I still totally want to do wrestling. That's my 100% focus. I love it. Um, but I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just use my biology <laughs> degree and see where that goes. What was the injury that happened to you? So it was honestly really stupid what happened. Um, uh -oh. I was trying to do like a roll I'd never done before. It's basically a handstand. Mm -hmm. And then from the handstand, you do the worm. So you like lower your upper body and like you do the worm. Like, and I, that's the only way I can describe it. So I did a handstand. I lowered my upper body, but um, my legs went over my head and I rolled and I scorpioned like a hundred percent. Oh, snap. Yeah. And I actually ended up bruising my spine, which was really messed up because for, oh my God, for months, it felt like lightning bolts instantly after I got hurt. It felt like lightning bolts were shooting down my hands. <laughs> I'm doing like jazz hands here. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> for oh my God, it, it didn't stop. So like an ambulance had to come. Like I was in the wrestling ring and the ambulance pulled me out of the wrestling ring. They're like, don't worry. We're going to give you some pain meds. The pain's going to stop. So I wait. I'm like, when are you going to give me the meds? They're like, we already did. And uh, yeah, I oh, couldn't use pain. my hands. Oh no. Yeah, it was horrible. I couldn't use my hands for like two months. If someone went like, <sighs> like very gently blew air on my pinky or my hands or anything, I would scream like wind, cold water, hot water. Like I didn't want to leave my house because the temperature change of the wind would burn my hands. Like my nerves were shot. And see right there, you just explained to me about that injury and, and look, I'll be straight up. If, you, if I ever had something like that, no. All right, I'm going to be in my bed and I'll be locked in there for months and months on end. But. <laughs> You again walk back and you said you love this business, you love wrestling, but why would you, for someone who's listening to this, and they hear that like I'm not doing that, like crazy. <laughs> why do you stick with, with with this, minding the pain that can come with it? Um, because uh, I I guess I learned my lesson. Like my lesson here was before you do something, make sure you know what you're doing. Always tuck your head, and I had to get stronger. So there was things I should have done to protect myself. And even still, yeah, there's a risk. There's a total risk every time. But I don't know. I think that's kind of the fun of it. You know, I'm one of those people, like, ever since I was little, like, I didn't want my life to be so cookie cutter. Like, you know, you, you finish school, you get a job, you get married, you buy a house, you have kids, then you're retired, and then that's the end. Um, I, I'd honestly rather like take risks and do things differently and just see where it goes. Like, you know, that game of life, like the board game, the game yes. of life, people are so willing to take risks in that game, but they never want to take risks with their own life. And it's like, it's I the, get, obviously it's the, what ifs, you know, the what if scenarios of everything. Yeah. And like, I never want to be an old lady one day and just think, oh, like, I wish I had just kept going. Like, I wish I had just followed my dreams. Like, no, I, I don't want to live in regret. I don't want to say what if. I'd rather find out the hard way. And you know, that that's a mindset that you need to have, especially when you take a chance on yourself. That, that's the, the thing on life. When you, want, when you want to pursue something, there are going to be the what ifs, and there's going to be of those, well, you know, this, can, this or that can happen. But like you said, you know, you don't want to live with regret. Whatever happens in life, at least you say, at least I tried. Exactly. With that, it leads to the beginning of that passion you had as a child. Because look, we know that your father was in the <laughs> business, but as a child, 
you didn't watch him that much, you know. I think that's nuts on itself because I, I would think you'd be <laughs> the most popular kid in your class. So, oh my gosh, how did you stay away from watching your pops do what he do his business at all? Honestly, well, it was past my bedtime. <laughs> oh, you follow the rules. Okay, look, okay, I got, I got yeah. that. I, I like, I, I was always a very academic kid. Like, I like I loved school, I got good grades, and I never really broke any rules. I was a very good little kid. And even still, like he didn't actually start working with WWE till I was like 12. Right. Um, so yeah, if I, I'm going to bed at like nine o'clock, like here Rod didn't start till like 9 30, I think. So that it was past my bedtime. <laughs> That was like all of us, though, you know, so I, that, that, that's actually that, that's actually pretty funny. You say that because that's like raw or smackdown. I couldn't stay. I couldn't stay past around like eight o'clock or, or ten because I, I knew if I did, my mom would walk in. But you better be able to get your butt in bed. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's so cool because of that, because, you know, the wrestling fan sphere you see on the outside and we see these wrestlers, their lavish lives of wrestling all over the all, around the world. But as, we don't think about the families. You don't think about their kids and Basically, the kids are kind of living the same lives we're living of uh, doing those same feelings. And with you, that's just dad. That's no one else. Yeah. That's just so Team Morel to all of us is still your pops. Yeah. So how was that for you, though, when he was traveling, you know, trying to bust his butt, but then also to find one day make his dream of going to the WWE? How was that for you growing up with him living that life? That's a good question. I mean... When I was little, so I have like a memory of being in grade four and my dad had just left to Japan. So that's kind of when like his journey really started. And I started not being able to see him as much as I used to. And he had these like business cards with his like old gimmick on it, like Johnny Giobasco. And there was like three pictures of him, like one with a knife, one with him flexing in his trunks and like another one where he's like doing a stance. And I remember going to class and handing out the cards <laughs> to all the kids in the class. I'm like, this is my dad. My dad's a wrestler. Were they impressed? <laughs> I think they were, some of them were like, oh, that's cool. And some of them were just like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's going on here? Like, who is this? Why is he on a card? Why is he holding a this sword? Is, not, this this is, is, is this your dad? Ooh, yeah. Who is this? So yeah, then things started, you know, changing, like between those trips and then, you know, the experience he was getting, the places he was going. And I was starting, obviously, to see him less frequently, which was like sad when you're a little girl, like you miss your dad. Of course. But I knew, like, I, I had faith in him. Like, I really did. Because before he left, he told me, he goes, he was like, Bianca, he's like, I'm going to put this work in. He's like, I'm going to be a wrestler. And he's like, I'm going to do this for you and me. My dad was a, a single dad. Um, so him and my mom divorced when I was, like, one. So it was always just, like, me and my dad. And when I wasn't able to see him, then I would just go hang out with my Nana, his mom, and his sister, and my Nono. So, like, you know, when I couldn't see my dad, I would, I would still be with the family. But yeah, he told me, he said, Bianca, this is for you and me. He's like, I'm going to make it. And he's like, and I'm going to pave the way for you. So I was like, okay, dad, like I knew he was doing it for us. And um, that's why it's so amazing now that like, I get to train from him. I get to learn from him because I feel like everything he went out to do and all the knowledge he went out to get that him and I had to spend all that time apart like now it's, it's for something like now it's coming together. Like all that time I spent missing him. It's like, wow, now I'm learning from him. And it's the feeling of learning from your dad. Like all that knowledge that he got, like all those years, I was like, where is he? What's he doing now? I know. And it's like, it's come full circle in it. And it's like, so rewarding that the, the time we both put in being apart from each other has now been able to kind of, you know, it paid back to him right away in a sense but for me I kind of always felt like hey what about me <laughs> and now it's it's coming back to me too kind of which which is nice and I'm excited and like, he's excited for me and he sees how hard I'm working and he's proud and it's like it's just been so nice this past year you know look that's a normal feeling you know when you don't have your parent there you know he's traveling seven days six what, six days a week it hurts you know it, yeah. it's, it's an honest <laughs> feeling of like I miss you, you know, I would rather you be here than there. And, but yeah. you also brought up how he, you know, he, he made a promise to you that I, this is for us. And I promise I'm going to do everything I can for us. But in the middle of that, was there any point 
even if, even when you were younger, did you resent his job? <laughs> did you ever yeah. say, I don't want you to do this anymore? You know what? I never, ever, ever said to him, I don't want you to do this because I knew that he loved it. And of course I love my dad. So I never said it to him. I wasn't, I wasn't one of those kids that like, if we went to the grocery store and I saw a cereal I really wanted, I would never ask for it. Or if I saw a chocolate bar I really wanted, like I would never ask for it because I didn't want to be rude. Like I, oh, okay. I was very, just very thoughtful of like, I didn't want to make anybody feel like they had to give me something or had to do something for me. I didn't want to impose even with family, which is kind of strange. But um, so I never said to him like, dad, I don't want you to wrestle anymore. But there was a long time where I was like, uh, like, like I wrestling took my dad away. And that's part of the reason probably like, even though it was past my bedtime, I could have watched it the next day. You snu- did, you, did, did, did you ever sneak a watch? Like did you ever like turn the volume down and look and just turn it just to see, oh, is that on? Is that on? I noticed, no, I noticed some clips like on YouTube because mm. back in the day, like I'd always be on YouTube listening to my Taylor Swift or whatever. Oh, man, so, you got Swifty, okay. I was when I was little. Uh, actually, I still like some of her songs. Oh, okay. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would check out like the cool, like the cool highlights, like some of the things he did with like celebs and everything I thought was awesome. You thought it was top tier. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but mostly, yeah, it was just kind of like, a little bit soured about it but like happy too and like obviously proud too because it would be cool still like you go to school and maybe one of your friends because I wouldn't actually tell people but my close friends would know and they'd be like did you know Bianca's dad is Santino and that's and the then- thing, so like, I would think like the, the, your whole school would know who your dad was though um I tried not to like mention it too much because I didn't want people to think of me any differently did they um, try sometimes uh people if, if they watched wrestling would be like oh my god that's so mm-hmm. cool and right. it would be funny and I'd laugh and I'd kind of think like I guess it's cool like it'd be nice to get that recognition but at the same time like eventually like if they're in my class like that's gonna wear off they're gonna get to know me and they're just gonna realize like that's just Bianca's dad kind that's of thing. true not that because you know too like sometimes people try to use that you know like they'll only try to take what they can get for you because of who you know and like you said you know they just think like, won't some people won't like some people wouldn't look at Bianca. They they just look at oh that's Santin Morel's daughter. How were you able to wean that out from the people that were using you to the people that really did like you? To be honest, that took me a very long time, and I think many friendships that I've had throughout my life, um, because I am such a trusting person, and like I wouldn't use anybody else or think of somebody else like for my own benefit. I never thought that someone would only be friends with me because of my dad or because they, they wanted to associate with me for reasons other than being my friend. And I never considered that until, you know, maybe just a few years ago, like three, four years ago, well into my early twenties, because I'm 25. So like even up to like 21, 22, I realized, you know, what makes someone a true friend and what it is like to have relationships that are beneficial for both people like you care about your friends and they show you that care back it's not just you're giving to all these people you have to actually get care back so like now I'm a lot more selective with who I let into my life and the people I do let into my life I show them the like utmost love and respect and kindness I'll do anything for them because I you know obviously because I care about them and I know that they would give it back too. And it's, you know, and even if they don't give it back, like if let's say my little sisters, like, like, you know what I mean? But that, that, that but, doesn't but, matter. But, but, but that, that's a size. Like the, the, <laughs> yeah. the siblings always get it. Okay. You yeah. can't, you can't get them too much. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, my little sisters is like, that's different exactly. with their family, but, but like, I wouldn't treat someone who's not my little sister the way I treat my little sisters. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, and sometimes you people will also use your kindness, you know, and they'll look, some will look at that as weakness, you know, and then they, they think they can just walk all over you. Yeah, yeah, been there. And I almost forgot, I also have a little brother. He's he, <laughs> he's two and a half. So oh, like, look at that. So I'm so used to saying my sister's my sister's, but my sister's or my brother. There we go. See, that's fair. That's good to go. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't forget about him, okay? Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. People do take uh, kindness for weakness. And like growing up, 
like I mentioned, I was such a like sweet, nerdy, like quiet, thoughtful girl. And I got to a point kind of like, I remember in high school, I had to start standing up for myself and not letting people push me around. But even still, you can stand up for yourself. But if you don't realize that someone's doing wrong by you, how are you going to stand up to them? If, if you you know what I mean? So that's true. So it's just been like a, I guess that's the fun part of life is learning all this stuff. And then now that I'm a young woman, nobody's going to pull the wool over my eyes. Oh my <laughs> now you're getting to the point where you're about to graduate. You know, you're about to go most graduate high schools. Now you, you, you brought up before how you didn't want your life to be basically just standard or you felt like you wanted more in your life. So when was that point in your head that you cl it clicked that, yeah, you know what? I do want to be a wrestler. I really want this. So I remember it was a conversation uh, I was having with my dad. And I think I was into like second or third year university and I just wasn't loving it. I, I was really disappointed by the education system because being someone who loved school my whole life, I thought university, we'd sit down, we'd discuss ideas and come up oh, with solutions. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah oh, no, no. It was nothing like that. <laughs> so, you know, I was a little disappointed. I felt a little unmotivated. Like, why did I work so hard my whole life just to come here? And it's like, not, not that good, you know? Right. Um, and I just realized like, that's not something I want to do the rest of my life is just sit, regurgitate information, just repetitively do the same things over and over again. And then my dad said to me, he was like, you like fitness? And I was like, yeah, I, I like fitness. <laughs> I've always worked out my, my whole life since I was like 12 ish. Um, like done tons of extracurricular sports and dance and all mm -hmm. that stuff, swimming. So fitness. Yeah. And I always did like school plays. I was on the improv team, um, did lots of theaters like that. And he goes, so you like fitness, you like acting. He's like, Bianca, what is, what are those equal together? And I was like, oh my gosh, wrestling. And then it clicked like, me and my dad have very similar personalities. So if he loves wrestling, how did I not ever realize that I would love wrestling? Like, and I do, and it's exactly fitness and it's exactly theater and it's like martial arts, which um, is big in our family too. So it was like everything I love rolled into one. And it's like, I had never actually clued into the fact that that might be perfect for me because I just spent my whole life thinking like, oh, it's my dad's thing. Like he's off doing that. Like, you know what I mean? Like it just, it kind of flew under my, the radar of my brain. It just it never thought about it. And that's crazy how then everything that is, you know, it's, it's, it's how, how life can turn like that of you wanting one thing and then finding out in the middle, like, wait a minute, I might want that too. And I, and you, you brought up before, your connection with your father and how excited he was for you to pursue this. But the moment that both clicked for each other to say, you should do this. Cause normally a lot of wrestlers who are out of the game, they would tell their kids, I don't want you to do that. You know, I don't want you to do what I had to deal with everything through the travel, through the pain, through the surgeries, but he encouraged that. Like, how did that make you feel that he wanted you to pursue this? Well, I felt, you know, pretty happy and supported and understood because a lot of parents, like, let's say, let's just say I went to him and I said, Hey dad, I want to do this. Like you said, a lot of parents would be like, no, absolutely not. You just should do something stable, yes. like be an accountant. And, um, my dad was like, you should do this. He, he wants me to take risks. He wants me to do something that, um, not everybody can do that. There's challenges. It's raw. It's real. And he, you know, he believes in me that I can do something like that. And he believes that I have the talent to, or the charisma to, or the, or, you know what, more than that, the drive, the fire to, and, you know, that to me was like, you know, he believes in me that I can do this. This is something I want to do. Like, let's see where it goes. Like, let's take this all the way and see where it goes. And so that's, that's where I am right now. And what did you so far, what have you learned about being a wrestler that you at the time, you had no idea about that, what your father was doing? Oh, that's a good question. Because since, you know, I kind of grew up with him being in the business and I did go visit him a lot. I went to Japan. Um, I saw what the dojos are like there. I went to OVW. I saw the training they did there with Rip Rogers. 
Um, when he was in Tampa, we visited FCW. I saw the Ontario Indie Wrestling. So in terms of like the business and, you know, and like his training and everything it took, like, I feel like I had a really good idea of what it's like, even with like WWE, when he was on tour, I would go sometimes with him on the road. So like, I know what it's like to get up at 4 a.m., make those drives, get to the venue, be there all day, you know, leave, you're tired, drive to the next hotel. Like, so in terms of expectations, like I know what the whole business is like, but I suppose one thing that I was surprised by, um, I don't know. I, I feel like there weren't too many surprises. Maybe just like the bond that you feel with the people within the, uh, the industry, because you kind of all have like this different understanding mm. of the training it takes, what you're doing, how you're putting yourself on the line. And I feel like there's a really big mutual respect between people in the industry. And like, it's a bond. It's kind of yeah, like a, a family. You're all traveling with each other and you all know exactly what each other's feeling through. Cause half the time we are family because we don't see our even family for months on end. Yeah. So I think maybe I got a greater appreciation of the sense of yeah family that you develop. Um, obviously I haven't done as long of tours or really signed with any companies to take that feeling to the extreme. Like my dad must have with people he was on the road with, but I got a little bit of a glimpse of it and it's nice to, you know, have those kinds of friendships. You love bringing about friends when you talk about your friendships. <laughs> I, I saw one, one post you posted, or maybe you were tagged in with, uh, uh, gold glove boxers, Scarlett uh, Delgado. And I love just the quote about what you talked about friends, you know, about how p you are, you are a product of the five people you surround yourself with. And that's true. That's completely true because you, you know, it's old saying, my mom always told me, you know, you are a product of your company, you know, mm -hmm. and if you, you will be judged through that. And how you said, how can you grow without the, the surrounding people around you? You want to be motivated with that. So I think it's a very, very insightful thing to, to, to think about. Thank you. You know, I've been doing like a lot of thinking lately too. Like when I wrote that caption, you know, I have had an, like a decent amount of social media followers and I've been putting, you know, a lot of content out. But then I really started thinking like, is my content meaningful? What are people, like, what do I want to share with people? So I, right now I'm making a conscious effort to actually share things with people in the hopes of maybe motivating them or inspiring them because maybe someone's going to read that someone wow you know she says here you're the co like you're the company you keep who do i spend my time with am i happy where i am in life right now and if i could honestly make one person read that and maybe make a change or a positive choice in their life and maybe direct them in that moment that slight moment in time on earth into a more positive light that is what I want in life. That that makes me feel like a complete person. Like I'm doing good in this world and, and that's what I want to do. Has that clarity also come during everything that we went through last year, 2020? Like did, did, that, did that have more insight? Like, you know, I want to do, not only do more, but I also want to do my part in helping more people. Um, Honestly, I've always, like maybe a little bit, but I've always, ever since I was little, I've always wanted to, help others make a big positive difference like I've always been a huge advocate for like nature the environment um I've always you know you know those school speeches you do in class speeches like oh, I'd always pick like pollution or you know animal habitats or, oh you were that student okay yeah like I care about this earth a lot and I just I care about the people on it and everything on it a lot and I really want our society to strive just for just more understanding of one another and more love between one another. And I think that's something that we're missing so much these days in this world, especially with the increase of technology, the increase of social media, people are almost forgetting that we're all just babies that grew up, yeah. you know, that's it. We, we all started so innocent on this world. And then we look at each other with these lenses and these judgments. And it's like, those don't even exist. And we need to remember, like we need to erase all that and think, hey, we are all people. We're all doing the same thing. Even animals, like 
dogs and cats and squirrels like they're not people but they're living we're all living here together and I feel like the world needs a greater sense of unity and I totally might sound like a hippie but that's okay because that's what I feel hey, look 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 look, look. <laughs> after everything we've been through last year I think we need a little bit of hippie love to, 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 <laughs> yeah to, to, to get around the right path you know and because it, it's it's so true what you say you know because everything I mean not only it's the whole world the whole what we all we all went through together and all the problems and things that were more shoved in our face and also opened our eyes about things you can't hide anymore. And notice that, man, there's just so much hate, you know, and we need that. We need more of going back to when we were a child, we didn't look each other with an option of what you know, what politics you follow. I don't care the skin tone you are. I just looked at you as you as a person exactly. I want to play with you because you got that cool toy or are you or are you just funny and I just thought oh man I gotta hang out with you right is that the new Beyblade oh my god <laughs> hey, <laughs> Beyblade oh don't play with me Bianca don't don't even start with me right now that's dope Bianca as we're over here and we're just talking now you you now learning to, to be a wrestler and you know everything about the business you also too know as a, as yourself you want goals you have set ideas about what you want in your life and hopefully to gain them. So let's just go up here and look, let's shoot your shot and just shoot into the atmosphere of what, what you want. If you could have it your way on your bucket list, what do you want in your career? Where do you want to go? And what ma- not only matches, but what things do you want to achieve in your career? Uh, obviously, I think every wrestler wants to main event <laughs> WrestleMania. Do they? One I, don't day. Know. I don't know. I, I mean, think that, so. That, 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 that made up place. I don't know. Yeah. It could be. I, I totally want a, a main event WrestleMania. Um, if I were to work for a company like WWE, I would love uh, to be more of like a, a nature science advocate at WWE. So I know they have a lot of initiatives, um, like, you know, anti bullying. And like that, you know, the be a star and everything. I would love to kind of advocate for a eco type of initiative. So that would be a dream of mine. Um, you know, and I, I think like other things that I've always kind of wanted would be like a fashion line, perfume line. Oh, what- you, you, you're not playing. Okay, keep going, keep going. <laughs> um, you know, I like writing, like uh, creative writing. So maybe I've always thought in retirement when I'm a little bit older, write some children's books or like sci-fi books or dystopian fiction, like some cool books would be nice. Any Um, ideas that cross your mind? Like anything of like, man, yeah, if I could, I'd, I'd totally write that out. So I had an idea for a book and I told a few people and apparently it's exactly like a bunch of other books that have been written. So I didn't do my research. I got to go back to the drawing well, board. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, hey, at least uh, it's the thought that counts. I don't know. I, the thing is, I like everything. So it's like, I would love to do absolutely everything that there is to do. Like, I'd love to write a song or be in a movie or direct a play or like wrestle in every country um like open a business like everything I want I want to do everything and you know I know sometimes people say you know jack of all trades master of none but I'm pretty sure if you put all the work in that maybe you could master them all now but also too you know with pursuing other of the goals and dreams you have there are also you know the negatives that will also be there and also things that you can't concentrate on but you can't deny that they're not there so what is one of the your biggest fears in your growing future? Like, what are some things that cross your mind that you just can't ignore? Um. Well, obviously, when it comes to wrestling, uh, I obviously think like, what if, what if I don't ever sign with any company? Like, what if nobody wants to watch me wrestle? Like, I'm very green still. I have a lot to learn. You know. Um. And I just hope that like with this pandemic, I feel like I haven't been able to completely like get my in-ring work to a point where I would like it. Like, obviously I've had quite a few matches, but I mean, I don't believe I'm the best wrestler in the world. And if I want to be one day, like one of the best wrestlers in the world, I'm going to have to put that work in. And I just, you know, I, you kind of, I hope I can get there. And I believe that if I put the work in, I will, 
but I think that's an insecurity of mine and maybe other people too is like am I good enough like will I will I make it you know you you have those what ifs and you wonder but I think that comes with just understanding that everything takes time and if you work hard and you really give 100% that those what ifs can go away and they can disappear because you're going to answer your own question with the amount of work you put in. So I feel that, you know, and it's true, you know, our, our worst enemy is ourselves, you know, and it's sometimes it's hard for us to have that, you know, the imposter, imposter syndrome, you know, and to feel that, am I worthy? You know, could right. I do it? And I think that's exactly what, what crosses your mind, but also too, you're, it can't stop you from pursuing what you love to do and hope and you want to achieve. And you're seeing these wrestlers and you're seeing how they work, you know, and how they're able to find themselves. Does that also inspire you to be like, oh man, I, I, I'm gonna go, I'm going straight back into the gym. I'm gonna do this and that and the third over here to make sure I get it just right. And also too, to find who is Bianca. Well, that's the thing, like it is inspiring and everyone else, like everyone has their own styles and it, you know, it's kind of like you borrow a little bit from this person, this person, this person. Like I think every wrestler that exists has taken things from other places. You like, it's all kind of recycled. You of have the same coaches, this and that. And that's something I'm still trying to develop is like, who am I in the ring? Um, you know, what moves do I feel like are really unique to me? So these are things I'm always thinking about. Um, nothing for me or my character right now is set in stone. Like I'm a, still a student, I'm learning. Um, even, you know, even when I go on the road, I'm planning on, you know, taking a trip hopefully in September for quite a few months, going to some schools in the States, trying to do some circuits down there. Like I want to get out there now. And even still when I'm in those places, I'm probably going to like, just tweak things like try this, try this, try this and, and see what works and see what sticks. There's nothing really defined for me yet, which I like because then it doesn't stick me in like a box, but uh, it's surprising because I love working heel and I am totally not a baby face, which is very, really? yeah. You scream it, baby face to me, but oh man. I, you would think so, but for some reason when it comes to wrestling and like getting in the character, I, um, I'm way more comfortable being a heel. And if you saw me actually in the ring um, at a live show, you would be like, oh my God, that is not the girl that I was talking to. Like this girl, I don't like her. <laughs> She's rude. <laughs> like, yeah. So I kind of find that, that really fun. I, I feel very uncomfortable being kind of a baby face character. Uh, it's much easier to make people hate you than oh, it is yes. to make them I, like you. I think that's why so many people like being heels because it's more yeah. fun to get people to hate you than try and make them love you. Yeah. But, and, and I, <laughs> you know what? I think that is so cool. How you 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 have a little fire of, of like, yeah, I want you guys to boo me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and, you know and, and coming from a person who I'm talking with seems like the most nicest person you can Thank meet. you. And also a person back when who wouldn't go out her way to say, I don't want to, I don't want to ask for cereal. I, don't, I, don't I know. Like <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's funny, I guess. All those years of not asking for the cereal I wanted made me go you dark. <laughs> you, you, painted, you painted all up in there. Now you say, you know what? I'm going to release it all out there. Yeah. <laughs> Should have bought me that nest quick, mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think one of the things too about when you talk to people and we want to just dive more deep about them is knowing their character as a person and about the people that they look at and that keep them going to achieve their set goals. So, Bianca, let me just put it out there for you. This here is the segment I like to call the appreciation time, right. aka the shout out time. And up here, we give love and appreciation to those who have been by our side and have picked us up when we couldn't move anymore. So right now, I want you to give love as much as you can to the people that have been with you and only want the best for you. Go on, so go ahead. Okay, all right. I love my mom, I love my dad, I love my stepdad, I love my little sisters, I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my mommy, my grandpa, my nana, my nono, my Zia, she helped shape me into this sassy person I am. Um, Marco, my little brother, my future little sister on the way. Um, 
my beautiful stepmother, Anna, who's been very supportive of me throughout the past year as well with all this like photo shoot stuff. She's been helping me so much. Um, my friends, like the ones I've had in the past that maybe we don't talk anymore, I'm appreciative of them. My friends that I have now, appreciative of them. Everybody in this world, you, I'm appreciative. I'm just so grateful for every experience, every person that's come through my life to make me and this world that it is, what it is, the thing it is today and the person I am today. We all would love to show our parents, you know, we appreciate them for believing in us and also not giving up on us, on our goals. And like you said in the beginning, how your father has been by your side and has been an ag advocate of you to pursue this dream in wrestling. When it's all said and done, how would you like to pay it back to your father to say, thank you for not giving up on me? Well, to be honest, and I hope he doesn't see this because it's gonna spoil the surprise. My dream one day, and he might know this, I think I might have told him already, I wanna buy him a really nice boat because he, he's always liked boats. And he's always just, every time we'd go for like a walk or a canoe ride or go somewhere where there's water, he'd always be like, wow, look at that boat. And I know it's something he's always wanted. So I would love to be able to give him a boat. Put it out there in the universe and it's out it there. <laughs> My name is Ronald E. Smith. This right here is Bianca Corelli and y'all, I think we just got real. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe. And I will. <laughs>